My name is Jason, and this is Pause Mode. Feels good to be back after a month. So the year is 1994, down to your last few tokens as you're wanting the local arcade. Desperately trying to find something for you and your friend to play, but there's really nothing you can afford. It's either keep losing to the 12-year-old Japanese kid on Street Fighter, or having to toss constant change at quarter munchers like Ninja Turtles, X-Men, Final Fight, and more. That's when you come across the Neo Geo 4 slot machine. Slots 1 through 3 have their various fighting series, but it's there in slot number 4 that you find a curiosity. A two-player game chock full of fun gimmicks, gorgeous graphics with a bouncy soundtrack, but more importantly, casual difficulty. The game, as you knew from the video title, is Top Hunter, a side-scrolling adventure game released to all three Neo Geo platforms. You play as either Roddy or Kathy across four stage types. What separates Top Hunter from the crowd is its charm. This isn't a game you play for bragging rights, trophies, or superiority. You play it for actual enjoyment and shooting the breeze with a friend. The game's levels are set up like Fatal Fury. You can leap between foreground and background to achieve various goals. In this case, collecting extra time, stacking extra point items, beating up the bad guys, jumping into oversized mechs like Metal Slug, and more. You'll have to tackle minor uh, mid-stage bosses, eventually fighting off the true bosses at the end of each area. Four levels are laid out before the heroes in full fashion, with ice, forest, fire, and water levels to tackle. Controls in the game are simple. You have punch, jump, and plane shift. From there, you can perform several Fatal Fury button commands for special moves and then super special moves based on health and power requirements. These include the staple fireball, uppercuts, and curiously honored hand slap and power dive. Regretfully, the Neo CD controller, specifically the pad, wears its ugly head. In certain games, the digital pad does not want to register diagonals, especially in Dragon Punch motions. While playing the game and recording footage for the show, the uppercut motion was just not consistent at all. Everything else was pretty, uh, pretty peachy keen, however. As usual, on the Neo Geo, the visuals are superb. Each stage makes great use of the dual plane system, and there are so many gorgeous little details to be found. Great examples are the rustling leaves, flowing rivers, moving fog, and fake wind effects, background in-jokes, and wonderful animations for the characters and mech units. One of my favorite animations, and for that matter concepts, is how the mech uses a shell casing to assist in throwing a punch. When the game was released in 1994, it was met with mild fanfare. As expected from what I just told you, it was met with hearty approval of everything but the ease of difficulty, which in the reviews had to have the cost of the original home cart in the deciding factor. 200 bucks is a lot to ask for an hour and a half of entertainment. Thankfully, these days, as long as you stick to non-AES releases, the game is much more affordable. MVS unit folks can sag one for 50 bucks, where Neo CD owners can shave off 10 bucks for about 40. Neither version is rare, which makes it both affordable and easily obtainable. The Neo CD version also snags infinite continues and pretty darn quick load times, so if you're a purist, it, a purist, it really is a great conversion on the system. If you're an ADS fan, though, be prepared to cough up anywhere between 100 to 300 bucks. For those of you without a Neo Geo system, Top Hunter is also hiding on the SNK Arcade Volume 1 disc, available for the Wii and the PlayStation 2. Alright guys, that does it for this week. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, just, just some crazy cloud and thunderstorms going on tonight. Um, have a great weekend, take care, keep laughing, and keep playing. Take care.